Okay, folks. Yeah, welcome to the webinar, and uh, we'll get started uh, uh, today. I'm going to show you some uh, algorithms on uh, uh, day trading, but we'll change these topics uh, all the time, and uh, depending on what the market sentiment is, I'm trying to have about one, maybe two webinars. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see how things go. Now, the uh, days of these webinars is not fixed. And so what you want to do is you, there's this uh, uh, bit.ly link here, bit.ly slash algo uh, webinars. If you click that and uh, there is a free course and you can enroll in this free course. That way you'll be kept up to date on when the webinars are coming or when the webinars are happening. And uh, you'll find some information about uh, these webinars over here. The, the link is here, but if you join the free course, then I'll be able to send you notifications and uh, with the live recordings or in case you miss something, then I can send you a recording as well. So that is uh, as far as the, uh, uh, the webinar logistics itself. Um, so my name is Hari Swaminathan. I'm the founder of uh, OptionTiger.com. I'm just going to give a brief background here. I see a lot of familiar names. Um, I started Option Tiger in, in 2002. Uh, prior to that, I've been a self-taught options trader and mentor for over 12 years. And on Udemy, I have a um, about 100,000 students enrolled. And I'll just quickly show you my Udemy profile as well. And uh, I think uh, it will be helpful if you... I, I've, I've got a lot of stuff over here. And this is all coming from experience with options and the markets in general. You can see I have 60,000 unique students and uh, over 100,000 uh, enrollments. Uh, with over 9,300 reviews here. But if you could take the time, I would urge you to just uh, read through some of this because this is very re uh, real stuff when we are dealing with the markets and uh, whatever I've had in my experience, I've tried to convey over here. Okay, so uh, so that's as far as Udemy is concerned. I run optiontiger.com, which is my own website. And let me just briefly show you that as well. Uh, that's right here. You can come to optiontiger.com. Um, lately, I've been working with a lot of algorithmic trading signal services. So there is one uh, algorithmic based signals, uh, I mean uh, a swing trading signal service. Uh, today we're going to look at the SPX intraday trading uh, and then there is the day trading signals as well. I used to run a webinar on this but because of some personal circumstances I've, uh, I've had to cancel the daily webinar session. And uh, which is why also I tell you if you uh, I, I don't know which days uh, I'll be holding a webinar. So you, your best bet is to enroll in this course here. So in any case, besides these, I have an entire options curriculum. So from beginner, intermediate and advanced. Now each of these modules has over 15 to 18 courses. So I'll just show you an example of the beginner. And so if you're completely new to beginner, I mean, new to financial markets or trading or investing, then this is where you want to start. And uh, there's an entire section uh, on uh, just financial markets in general. And then we start getting into options. Uh, there are some mini courses as well. So similarly, you'll see the same kind of uh, uh, material and courses in uh, the intermediate as well. And then there are some advanced courses. So all of these have about 15 to 20 courses each. And then I have what I call the max systems, which are beyond advanced. I mean, these are very elite property, you know, intellectual property, very elite techniques, and which have all come from trial and error over the years. And whether you're looking for day trading, swing trading, earnings reports, how to, uh, you know, play calendars, how to, uh, you know, get the best out of uh, uh, iron condors. Weekly max is about weekly options. Adjust max is a universal adjustment philosophy. So all of these are very advanced systems. So uh, anybody interested, you can go in and click into these and you'll see uh, generally you'll see either a webinar or uh, some kind of a recording there that you can watch about it. And then, uh, of course, the course details and everything is there. So that's as far as the Option Tiger website is concerned. Let me come back here. And so, as I said, I've been lately involved in proprietary algos uh, for trading success. So algorithmic trading tools in general for the retail level has not been available or has not become popular for, you know, and, and that's for good reason, because uh, most of these algos are being run by uh, the, the professional trading firms uh, and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. The institutional, what we call the institutional uh, traders or institutional investors. 
the algo trading has uh, has uh, become uh, has become popular but you know it, it's still pretty nascent at the retail trader level and uh, with options it's a bit more trickier because if you uh, if you've uh, experienced with options there's a lot of parameters here and at the retail level it's hard to come up with something unless you invest so much into into programming and uh, uh, and even hardware. I mean, you need uh, you know you need a lot of uh, crunching power here. And so, up until recently, uh, you know, the best way to analyze what the markets are doing or what the stocks were doing is to you know just previously just cycle through the charts and the indicators and all of that. But algos can now be coded to do the same thing on watch lists. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, all computing power in general. Uh, has uh, has increased and so now at the retail level um, you're finding a lot more interest in the algos and and to be clear algos is not a is not a black box in the sense that it cannot um, do everything for you for you I mean algos the best thing they can do and especially with options you know if you're trading stocks then perhaps you can create a black box system but with options there are so many parameters to to think of and look at that uh, algos just cannot do everything. So all of these algos, all they do is they will create a high probability trading scenario. So and that's really all you can ask for from the markets because even uh, you know if you have uh, some of the best algos also can go bad. And uh, in fact, when you hear of things blowing up even within the institutional trading uh, environment, uh, you uh, you know it's because algos have gone bad. And so you, you cannot test the algo for every possible situation in the market. And at some point, the algo will go uh, rogue and uh, you know, it'll backfire. So I don't know if you guys heard about uh, this company. I forget the name. I, uh, this was about three to six months ago. Uh, it's an options trading company and they had an algo. It was a $100 million fund in Florida and they just completely blew up overnight, completely just on you know one trade, I suppose. But uh, I don't know the details, but uh, you know that's what happened. So, yeah, you have to consider that algos are a huge tool. They are a very good resource and they will take your probability of uh, good trading to a much higher level. And really, that's what uh, we are looking for. So here on Option Tiger, um, as of now, we have a day trading algo and this algo filters stocks for the best candidates. And of course, once the market starts, we're going to look at all of this. And then the day trading SPX is an indicator for market internals. And the swing trading algo is a multi-week trading time frame. So all of these will take a quick look at it. What I want to talk about today is the SPX market internals. So the advantage with the SPX is it's an index, and that means it's it's made up of component stocks. And in the case of the S&P 500, we have 500 stocks that go into the S&P index itself. So there is already some internals available. And one is the vol SPD, which tells you the up minus down volume of all the stocks in the S&P. So uh, any stock that's up, that, uh, that volume is counted as up volume and any stock that's down, it's counted as down volume. And then you have advances minus declines, the ADSPD. So all of these, they try to give you a sense of the breadth of the market. So when I say breadth, okay, it's not just what is one stock doing, what is one index doing, what is the internals of that index so which means in the, in the case of the S&P 500 we're looking at 500 stocks then there's a third one called the ticks and the ticks is it's just an uptick minus down tick so every millisecond in all these 500 stocks they are either ticking up or ticking down and so the ticks calculates what is the number of upticks what is the number of down ticks and it gives you a continuous reading when the markets are open so the ticks in that sense is a lowest denominator in the sense that the, it's, it's totally raw data. I mean, it's the probably rawest is not a good is not a right word, but it is the rawest data coming from the market because it is computing things at real time on a tick by tick basis. So even in one second, if you have a, a stock like Apple, for example, in one second, it might be ticking several, you know, maybe even hundreds of times. And so all of those are being calculated. So the ticks per se, if you look at the chart and I can show that to you, the ticks per se is not very helpful in general. But then what you can do is do a cumulative ticks. So which means for as soon as the market starts, the up ticks and the down ticks are being calculated. And then there is a cumulative total that is running 
as, uh, as long as the markets are open. Now, this is what really becomes extremely helpful and gives you a perfect uh, indication of the market breadth. Now, some people may have attended this webinar about two or three weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, I think. And um, we did, uh, you know, we did, uh, you know, look at these uh, cumulative ticks as well. Now, one of the things, and of course, you know, I've been looking at it uh, also since then. And one of the things that uh, we have to think about the ticks are, see, the ticks start calculating at the beginning of the market. So when the market opens. And so you want to let the ticks go for some time. And, and, and for some time, I mean like half an hour, one hour. And because you need to let the market breadth start showing itself. And so what we did in the earlier webinars, we took a couple of trades at the beginning and that's actually the wrong thing to do. You have to wait for some time so, so that the tick information starts developing and starts building and starts developing a pattern or a trend. And that's when you want to get in. So this is what we are going to look at today, the ticks indicator. And then what we'll also look at is something called a custom RSI. So if you've heard of the RSI indicator or if you've seen it, they generally tell you when a stock is overbought and oversold. So generally considered to be a reversal. When it goes into the overbought at the top, you expect some sort of a reversal and the same thing at the bottom. But this custom RSI has been customized to depict bullish and bearish zones. So then it starts becoming persistent. So what I mean is you'll see it on the chart that once it gets into the bullish zone, it, you know, it could remain there. It could remain there. And that tells you to remain in the trade. Now, not all, not all the time will it remain there. I mean, it all depends what the market does. But when it remains in a zone, when it's persistent, that's when you want to stay in the trade. And then the custom RSI works for any time frame, day, swing or longer term. And it works on any chart, currency, commodity, stocks. So it's a very helpful indicator. So finally, I just want to leave you with some links here. Uh, this is of course going to be recorded, so you don't need to write this down, but uh, you know, you can, uh, if you want to write it down, that's fine. But if you need more information, there's a YouTube playlist for the custom RSI. There's a YouTube playlist for the SPX algo itself. And of course, this is my, my email and I'll come back to this a little later. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can, uh, you know, you can send me an email here. All right. So that's as far as the presentation is concerned. What I want to do is now we got one minute left in the market. So uh, what I have here, you can see there's a day trades column and there's a stock watch list over here. So this is the proprietary day trading algorithm that I'm talking about, uh, which tells you and it looks at the pre-market also. And so you can see that, uh, you know, some of these are all in the pre-market right now. This is all a five day, five minute chart, except for the slash ES, which is a one day, one minute chart. And I'll come back to discussing that as well. So on a one day, one minute chart, you can see that based on this price action, the ES has moved into the bullish zone. So this is the custom RSI that you're looking at over here. And whenever you see the blue, that is the bullish zone. And whenever you see the red, that is the bearish zone. And what we'll do is we're going to uh, expand this and uh, we'll walk through how this indicator works. And then uh, we, can, uh, we can get a better idea of uh, what we're talking about. The markets are just about to open, about 15, 17 seconds left. So what I'll do is let me maximize this cell because this is really what we are looking at over here. And I'll also maximize the screen so you can see clearly. So once the market starts, you'll see that this ticks, that the tick SPX is the tick cumulative tick that I'm talking about. And there goes the market. And so this is a one day, one minute chart. And what we are going to see now, as the minutes go by, you're going to see the tick developing. And so this is going to be interesting to watch. And the ticks, like I said, it gives you the up ticks minus the down ticks. So you can see the first tick is starting to develop at negative 30. Now, the numbers per se, the absolute numbers are not important because what you want to see is the trend and these numbers can go anywhere. They can become minus 500. They can become minus 1000. It depends on what the you know uptick minus downtick value is and that can be anything. So um, we'll wait and we'll see how this thing is going. So you can see that in the pre-market, uh, the ES went up over here. So if you're really, I mean, if you're day trading, yeah, you know, you know uh, this could be a day trade. Sure, why not? But you don't want to get into these small uh, scalping type trades. You want to wait for a trend to develop. And that's when it makes, uh, it makes the best sense. So now you can see the next tick is developing at minus 100. The blue tick just says it's the first tick of the day. And so that's the color. And now you'll see 
if it's uh, if down ticks are developing you'll see it in red and if up ticks are developing you'll see it in uh, blue uh, uh, in uh, blue also the ticks is the indicator that looks at the market internals the custom rsi it simply looks at price action okay so this is purely price action so here you can see the custom rsi now going into the bullish zone over here uh, and but the ticks are at negative 100 so you know this itself uh, tells you that okay the rsi from a price action standpoint uh, it's bullish okay but you want to see both whether it's uh, the rsi or the uh, or the ticks you want to see them synced up and that's when it makes for a good trade so let's just wait and watch this you can see the second tick is developing and uh, let's see what the value comes okay the value was negative 151 you can see the value over here uh, of the latest tick so the latest tick is negative 151 and now you can see the price action on the rsi also dipping down one of the things is when the market just starts all that pre-market pent up uh, demand or supply is coming out and rushing out and that's and that's precisely why you see volumes go up like this at after the markets open and so there is a lot of pent up stuff that is uh, coming into the market at the market open so on the spx intraday ticks trading tick based trading you want to wait now, not just for this reason also for the previous reason you want to let the ticks develop for some time and then you can see a much better trend going on with the ticks so as the ticks are developing here what i want to show is what do i mean by uh, this ticks developing so here we are looking at a one minute chart because the markets have just opened and we want to get a pretty quick feedback loop onto where the ticks are going now you can see the ticks are down to negative 216 so obviously there is a slight bearish sentiment going on however if you look at the es futures it's up only 0.25 so it's not that bearish as the ticks may seem but this is what i'm talking about when i say uh, it's all the pent up uh, thing coming into this so while we are waiting for these ticks to develop what i want to do is first of all change this to a five minute chart right now and so we can go back and see what what you know, on on these previous five days at least uh, what exactly happened and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back here and go to each of these days now the ticks will only work when the markets are open so and you know the futures trade uh, almost 24 hours but you're not going to get data when the markets are not open so here this is uh, yesterday's price action and this is yesterday's tick action so now this is a five minute chart so i think once the market opens and it's gone into the first 30 minutes to one hour that's when you want to change the chart to a five minute because the five minute gives you much better perspective of what is going on with the internals and so if you looked at the market uh, yesterday i think the futures were up a little bit about three four points but then the markets ended down uh, you know 10 points and you can see that even though the markets tried to go up at the open uh, it uh, the ticks never really you know caught up uh, you know in, in a whole a lot of way even if you can see the biggest uh, the highest tick here was positive 161 and so that itself will tell you that yes the market is trying to go up but the ticks are not responding and of course the custom rsi only tells you the price action so really you want to look at the ticks to understand what's going on and then sure enough on the five minute chart once you see two or three red dots or two or three green dots developing that's when you're looking for a trade so you know if you if you give up the if you discount the first half an hour to one hour what what you're seeing is somewhere here there's a you know a persistent trend developing and so you know if you took the trade let's say over here when the smp when the es was at 3014 i'm looking at the level on the right hand side somewhere here uh, you, you know you can write this nicely and you can see the ticks are going to support your trade and you can see that uh, you know at some point and the rsi also support the rsi is telling you stay in this trade it's still going bearish when the rsi turns around that's when it's rsi is telling you only price action though so even though the ticks are going down rsi is saying hey there is some you know uh, change happening with the price action right here and so you want to get ready to get out of your put trade at that point and then it's just it just chops around here and there it briefly goes into the bullish but the ticks are still negative here the ticks at this point are still three you know negative 392 and, and then another bearish move comes and then there is a persistent move of the of, of the uh, i mean there's a persistent red dots coming in 
and the RSI goes back into the bearish zone and then from here at least until here you have a small trade there so each of these are five minutes so you know both of these trades would have lasted about half an hour each this one would have been very very profitable it would have been nice uh, this one would have been okay not not that bad but what you want to do is wait for these opportunities and take just one or two trades during the day and that's you know that's that's the best way to take advantage of day trading at least on the S&P so now let's just go back one more day and uh, see what happened the previous day so this uh, this would be the trading action on Monday so once again at the open it the markets crashes but then the ticks are not supporting that the, the RSI is telling you yeah price is going down but the ticks are saying perhaps in the in the in the futures you can see the futures building up and so this pent up uh, demand actually to buy is, is coming in and you're actually seeing green dots. So once again, these two are not in sync. So you don't want to take the trade and then it starts going up. However, the RSI is still in negative as far as price action is concerned. So this is a little choppy action over here. And so you may not get a trade at all uh, until you perhaps you come over here and you see the RSI also also going up. The ticks are now uh, slowly but surely they're moved into the green into the positive you can see now they're it's positive 217 and so somewhere here you have a little bullish trade here and that's probably the only real big trade of uh, you know of uh, Monday because you want to see both RSI as well as the tick SPX sync up and you also want to see some kind of a persistent trend now if there's just one dot in the middle of green dots that's fine but you know, if you see two or three dots, then it's time to get out of your trade. So if you were in a bullish trade over here and you see these two two dots, it's perfectly fine to take, you know to, to come out of the trade. It's it, it's not a bad uh, you know deal. Uh, but you can see that the RSI still remains in bullish. It just briefly dips over here and then it goes back into bullish. So you know from here a trade could have lasted till, till here. You could have, but at any point if you were to take off, you would be taking it off at a profit, and so and that's perfectly fine. So this was probably the, you know, that kind of a day over here where you had this one trade and you could have taken advantage of that. Let's go back one more day here and see. Now here is where you get a really nice trading opportunity as you can see. You know, the ticks, in the, in the, in the, when the market starts, it actually starts going down a little bit and here some more, but you can see the ticks are not giving up. The ticks are still at zero or above, only here briefly it goes below the zero line. And so that itself should tell you the internal breadth of the market is quite strong right there. It's quite strong. And so you want to wait for the price action also to get synced in with these takes. And that's when you can get a trade. And so here you can see that the price action wise, there's not a little bit of choppiness, but where you get the real trade is right here. And that's when you see some persistent activity, you see persistent RSI, and that's when you can stay in this trade from somewhere here all the way into the close. And it closes right at the top. It closes right at the top. So this would have been a great trade on, uh, this was what, Friday, I believe. So this would have been a great trade. And, and only one trade for the day. That's all you need because if you can ride a wave from 3011 on the ES, all the way to about let's say 3016 that's five points on the S&P and if you had like a 40 delta option that's going to create a lot of profits that's going to create a lot of profits so that's really what you, we are looking at in terms of how to interpret these uh, indicators and how to take the trades I don't think the approach should be that you get in and get out uh, the, the approach should be you need to wait for a persistent condition and when you can see the ducks lining up in terms of the ticks, in terms of the price action, in terms of the RSI, that's when you go for a killer trade. I mean, if, even if you had a five contract position on this trade here, I would say you'd have made a, a, probably about uh, anywhere from thousand to a fifteen hundred dollar uh, trade just with five contracts. Okay, so that's the kind of opportunity it is. You have to wait for the right time rather than trying to get in and out. Make sure the price action, make sure the ticks are, are, are becoming persistent. So what this is telling us here is here as the markets are going on through the day, the ticks are improving, going higher. That means the market breadth for, you know, maybe 300 out of 500 or 400 out of 500 stocks in the S&P are all ticking higher. And so this is a persistent move in the ticks. And so when you have that kind of strength in the breadth, then you have a great trade, whether it's to the upside or downside, it doesn't matter. But you need that strength, uh, you know, in the bread. 
And I think in the previous webinars, what we tried to do was catch the open and that's not the right approach for this. So if you've seen a recording of this before, the right approach is you wait for half an hour, one hour, let the ticks develop, let the data come in, and then you start seeing the strength coming into the market or the weakness coming into the market because obviously we are agnostic as to which way the market goes from a day trading standpoint as long as we can make profits on either move whether it's a call or whether it's a put we don't care as long as we want to make profits on that particular day so i'm not saying your long term portfolio and things like that obviously that all depends on each one's uh, you know individual portfolio but uh, i'm just saying on from a day trading perspective you want to get uh, into, a, into a profitable trade, whether it's to the upside or to the downside. Let's look at this. This is the last day in our five day sample. Um, market starts, tries to go up. No, it's weak. It comes down. Then it tries to go up again. No, it's weak. So this is a choppy market. This is a very choppy market. If at all there was a trade, it's probably right in the last one hour over here where you know there's some kind of persistent activity starts and uh, even in this you know a small trade a five contract position can make about five six hundred dollars easily and uh, then it remains persistent through uh, to, uh, to the close and so that probably is the only great trade you could have taken one on this bearish you can see this one is pretty persistent over here however what you're looking at the ticks is it only two dots go below the zero line so which means there is some strength in the market so that's what you have to uh, uh, be aware of. However, if you wanted to do a sort of a short term, very quick trade, you could have done one over here and you would have made a good profit actually. But the strength of the market is telling you that it, you know, it, it's more towards the upside rather than the downside. Okay, so now let's go back to our current situation in the market and let's see what's going on. So this is a five day chart. So I want to move back to a one day chart because when the market opens, you want to get a lot more data points uh, first and so now you can see the ticks are going down the ticks are going down however the the the, uh, the price action is still you know it's flat so at some point these ticks are going to make a statement in the sense that if the market internals are continuing to go go down at some point the price will start reacting to that so on a day like today you want to get ready for a put trade at some point, we're still too early in this. The market has just opened. It's only been 13 minutes uh, since, we, since the market opened. So it's too soon. You want to let this data come in. And the data is very important for you to make a judgment as to, okay, which way are we going? What are we trying to look for? So if this kind of tick activity continues on the one minute chart for another half an hour or 40 minutes, then you really want to get ready for a put trade because at some point the price action Will, will stop being flat and it started, it's going to start going down because the breadth of the market is weakening. So there is another way uh, we can look at breadth. Let me just go back and I'll show you the day trading algorithm for, uh, for stocks. And uh, here we can see over here, right now it's still showing bullish because of price action here. But once again, this is also data that's just coming in. So as of now, things are you know okay. The, the ES is, uh, is, is, is flat. Uh, and you know stocks are also re uh, uh, reacting in a similar manner however once we see that the ticks are actually going down like this at some point it's going to start impacting the index also it's going to start impacting these stocks and you can see the day trading algorithm you know this is uh, once again a, a, a custom algorithm that looks at price action three different moving averages uh, momentum it also looks at money flow so it, it looks at price and volume together so this is also another algorithm that but this is for stocks whereas the ticks is only for the index okay so now you can see some bearish action coming on this so let's go back to our ticks uh, program and let's maximize this and uh, just see what's happening here so i'm just going to pause it here it's being recorded so we, what we want to see is the price action also go down which means now the custom RSI should also go into the bearish zone. We need to see some uh, uh, you know some kind of degradation in the price and so we are, that's what we're going to be looking for. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and leave it here and uh, I'm just going to get a bottle of water I'll be right back. Okay so now you can see the price action is uh, going down and that's because the internals are telling you so right now if you see the tick value of the last tick it's negative 884 so that's a pretty weak uh, you know weak uh, internals there and the question is you know is it going to remain like that you know how much you know how much is going to remain so here you can see some higher volume coming in so you know also look at your general technical analysis stuff 
So some higher volume coming in here. Uh, maybe uh, you know it's building a support zone. We don't know. So in 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 any case, you don't want to take a trade in the first, like I said, a half an hour. You need to let these ticks develop and then see what the trend is, uh, and then uh, you want to go there because this data has to come in after the markets open. So I'm sensing there is a slight bit of support here because of the higher volume and, and it closes over there, but it's too early to say, uh, you know, we, uh, we just need to give it, uh, we just need to watch it some more. So let's watch this here. So once again, some higher volume came in on this. And again, it's telling me some kind of a support zone is trying to build over here. And we'll have to see what the ticks are. The ticks are going even further down. So unless the tick value changes, uh, I, this uh, uh, whatever little support zone here is probably not going to hold because if the ticks continue to go down, then it is going to be a bearish day, uh, at least bearish morning, let's say, because nothing is permanent. I mean, things can change any time, but uh, at least you want to catch it. You want to catch the trend. You want to get a good grasp of what the internals, what the strength or weakness of the index is. And that's what makes for a great trade. And so you're going to have to wait for that. So I'll, uh, you know, I'll just pause it here. Let's just watch here. So this bar is just about to get over. Let's see what the tick value comes up. And that should give us, as I, as I said, these two bars here look like a support zone was building with the higher volume because the price action also came to the middle of the bar. So you can see a slight green tick developing over here. And so now you can see it's negative 964. So it was negative 1000 plus. So now it's become negative 964. So there's an improvement in the ticks uh, from a relative uh, standpoint. And you can see the RSI also coming out of the bearish zone and moving into neutral territory. So anything between the 40 and 60 is neutral territory. And then once it goes above 60, it's in the bullish zone. So it was there in the bearish zone for a few minutes and now it's come back into neutral. And so let's see where things go. So the best way to use these ticks and the custom RSI is, uh, or at least for the SPX intraday trading, is to let a lot of data come in. So for the first half an hour to one hour, you just want data to come in. That's what defines the state of the internals of the index for that day. Now granted, anything can always change, of course, but what you want to at least see is some kind of a persistent state and that's where you can get into the trade. At the end of the day, uh, over trading is not a good idea. And so especially when you're day trading, because uh, you know, there's commissions, there's, uh, uh, there's a lot of noise in terms of the signals and in terms of the chart action and the price, uh, price action. So uh, the best approach for day trading, at least the S&P index is uh, you wait for this kind of information. And once that is set, you take one good trade and that's enough for the day. I mean, that's it. You, you, you know, you're done. One good trade a day can uh, just on five contracts can get you anywhere from five to seven hundred to all to even two thousand or three thousand. Depends on the move, obviously. But all you need is that one good trade. Now, granted, you know, for some people, five hundred or thousand may not be much, but you know, you might have a large account. That's OK. You can put your size according to your account. Uh, and uh, you know do it but the point is you want to wait for that one good opportunity when it comes to these uh, you know uh, trading based on market internals so you can see a little bit of choppiness coming in again um, on this bar it got shot down all the way to the bottom uh, and uh, so let me see here yeah okay so let's see how the how the ticks develop a slight negative uh, you know a red dot is developing but that red dot is not fixed yet it's only after the bar is over that it goes back and corrects the reading and that's when you know what the real tick value was. So once again, let's just watch this. So you can see on that previous bar, the tick value improved a little bit. That's why you see a green tick, a green dot. Uh, and so there was a slight improvement. The RSI still remains in neutral territory. So at this point, there's really no trade that jumps out. And once we get to the, once we finish uh, the next five minutes, what we'll do is we'll shift to a five minute chart because the five minute chart will give you much better perspective. So you can shift to the five minute chart anytime after 30 minutes to one hour uh, and that will give you much better perspective. Uh, the one minute chart can be a little noisy, but at the market open, you want to see the one minute chart because you want a quick feedback loop as to what is going on in the internals. And so that's why uh, you choose the one minute for the first half an hour, 45 minutes, one hour, whatever, depends on the market action. But what we'll do is today, we'll shift to the five minute chart uh, once half an hour of market uh, open has happened. 
just a quick comment as you can see there is a significant improvement in the text it is still negative however there is a significant improvement in the text it was negative a thousand now it's negative 676 and you can see the RSI also in terms of price action is trying to move into the bullish zone let's see if it gets there so while we are watching meanwhile if you have any questions please feel free to uh, type it into the chat box I'm here watching the charts and so uh, I can take some questions uh, while we are not uh, while I'm not uh, uh, talking about anything. So here you can see the it was negative 600. It's gone to negative 700. However, it is choppy. So there's no real trading opportunity yet. The only one that could have been was uh, this one right here, but that was too soon. I mean, all this is a one minute chart, and so you know all this is happening within uh, seven or eight minutes, and so that's just not enough for of a data point and plus it's too close to the market open and so you want to let the data come in first okay so we are into the first half an hour of trading so I'm going to change this to a five minute chart and let's see what that looks like because on a five minute basis the numbers will change uh, uh, you know what the ticks are so you can see on a five minute basis the ticks are actually improving okay although this is in bearish zone because of this kind of a price action the RS RSI is showing bearish However, on a five-minute zone, uh, on a five-minute chart, you can see that the ticks are actually improving from where it was, and so, uh, and you can see from the price action also, we are still very flat. We are still very flat. So, on a five-minute uh, basis, we are just negative 105 ticks at this point. So, it's still a flat market. I don't think we have any good trading opportunity yet. So, we'll just wait and uh, see how this develops. Seems like it may be just a little too soon for the five minute chart. I'm going to go back to the one minute and uh, let's see if we can get better, some better perspective here. So on many days, you'll find that the first half an hour gives you a lot of data and that's enough. And then on other days, it may not. And so that's how the markets work. And on a daily basis, the market you know plays out a completely different story. And uh, so for, from a day trading standpoint, you want to... Uh, try to understand what is uh, what is the story for the day because that's really what uh, presents you with the trading opportunities. So even from the one minute uh, standpoint, you can see the ticks are improving. There was a slight uh, bit of a down tick here, but uh, as, as you can see, it is improving because we, we are coming now from a negative of almost a thousand ticks somewhere here, and now it's negative 684. So the market is trying to move to the higher side, but the ticks are still negative. So uh, at this point. What we can, uh, what we can uh, sort of, uh, you know, come to a conclusion is that okay, it, you know, the internals are still looking negative. However, there, there could be some improvement coming. But in terms of the price action, the ES futures is just down one, one point two five, which is not a whole lot. Okay, now you can see the price action is showing that it's getting into bearish. The ticks are also moving down. And now we have quite a bit of uh, data points here, not quite, it's just about 40 minutes into the trading day. So I say we stick with the one minute chart for now, but this was a very high volume bar and uh, it took, uh, it went all the way down. So that is uh, pretty negative there, that is pretty bearish there. But uh, let's wait and see how uh, things play out here. Okay, let's just go to a five minute and see from that perspective. Yes, we are entering into bearish mode, definitely. All right. So now you can see that it is getting into bearish mode. All right, so this is the time you can probably take a trade. This is persistent here and uh, you know, the ticks are negative and it's going down further. So you can see that uh, you know, this, could be, this could be a potential trade. I'm not gonna take the trade, but I'm just gonna show what we can do uh, if this were the case, because uh, if you come to the SPX right there, and of course, this is a big round number here. You can see uh, you know, the 3000 level is a big round number there. Uh, options to come up and if you want you can go in for today's expiry if not we can go in for this the uh, 19 July and what you want to do is take about uh, you know anywhere from a 30 to 35 Delta uh, option right here I'm just going to put this here this is not a day trading service but I'm just going to put this here if we were to take the trade so on the five minute chart you can see that the tick is negative 356 okay so that's what we're looking at and I think this would be a this would have been a good point to take a bearish trade. Let's see how it plays out. Now things can of course always change, and so you want to be prepared with your uh, risk management and trade management principles. Uh, you know as well, uh, what you can always do is uh, you know uh, convert it to a debit spread if it's not going uh, if it's not going your way, 
Uh, and then if it still doesn't go your way, you can convert it to a credit spread. You can at least come back to break even on the trade. So the five minute numbers give you a much stronger perspective. Okay, stronger means much more reliable. The one minute can be noisy, but the five minutes, there's a five minutes worth of ticks going into the S&P. And so that's a very reliable number. Now you can see that uh, the, the, this five minute bar is going to come to an end. And so we are at negative 356. And let's see what happens to the tick value. Uh, just because it you know, improves, that doesn't mean anything because it's just one bar. Uh, right now we have three consistent red dots here. And let's see how this one ends right now. Yeah, you can see it's going down. It ends at the very low of the bar with a higher volume. So a lot of selling here, definitely. And you can see the tick value on the five minute has gone to negative 549 now. It's 549. So if you were to look at your option here, uh, you can see from 460, it's gone to 530. So on a five contract position, uh, that's about $400 profit right there. Okay, because we, you know, if we, if we, we had gotten at 460, it's now at 530. So just trying to show you how these trades can become profitable right there. Now, what we want to do is you want to stay in the trade because the price action is telling you that it's going bearish. Now, if the RSI starts to turn around and if you have a decent profit, you want to book it at that point because you don't want to mess around with a nice profitable trade. So either you take off half of your position, whatever it is, but if the trend is changing and you have a profit, you might as well take off the profit because you can always get back into the trade if at all the, uh, you know, uh, the original trend still continues, then you can take off uh, and go back. So here, once again, now it's uh, going down some more. Uh, it's at 560. There, there we go. This is, a, this is a $500 profit right there, okay, on five contracts. Let's just keep an eye out and see if there's any change. Now, this is where I would, this is what I mean. It, it keeps you in the trade. As long as the custom RSI is not changing direction, it keeps you in the trade. And uh, you can uh, take, you got out of the five contracts, you can certainly take off two and book some profits. That's never a bad idea at all. But uh, you can uh, also remain in the trade for longer, remain in winning trades for longer. If the trade is not going in your favor, then at some point you'll have to do some risk management and trade management. So now you can see the price action is uh, trying to change. The RSI is still looking down, but let's see how this bar shapes up here. And you can see the option price is giving up some value there. So hopefully you'd have taken off two or three contracts and uh, booked profit on that. Certainly higher volume coming in on this bar right there. You can see even the previous bar was quite high volume. This one's going to be even more than that. And the RSI is pointing down. So which means you still stay in the trade. Now, certainly you can take off partial profit. There's nothing wrong with that. But you, you're still in the trade at this point unless things change. So you can see we are back to 560 on the option price, which is a $500 profit. But you're still in the trade because everything is pointing downwards. The custom RSI as well as uh, the ticks are pointing downwards. And some big volume coming in here. Most of that looks like it's selling volume because it continues to push it down. Okay, so that bar is over. Let's see what the tick reading comes. Negative 563. So definitely bearish. The RSI is still pointing down. And uh, we have about a $600 profit on the trade. Once again, a chance to uh, uh, you know, books, book a little partial profit if you if that's what you wanted to do, or if you you know if you felt like that's good enough profit for this trade, then that's perfectly fine because we've been in this trade for I mean you would have been in this trade for about 10-15 minutes already, and so at some point things will change, and so that's just the nature of day trading. Um, very rarely do you see things just go off in one direction and stay there. So at some point things will change. So you do want to book your profits every now and then. So this volume is very high, okay? Only the open bar is more volume than this. So I'm sensing it may be building a support zone here also. But let's see, the ticks are negative 563. The RSI is still looking uh, quite bearish. You're in the bearish zone. So as of now, you could still be in the trade. Let's just for perspective's sake, let's just go back to a one minute chart and see what uh, that is telling us. Okay. One minute says that we are still in the bearish zone. However, you can see that the RSI is turning. So this is where, the, you know, shifting from a one minute to a five minute becomes helpful. 
you can see on the one minute level uh, this was that big volume right there and this is definitely forming a support zone in my opinion and so now you can see on the one minute the the, the, the RSI is uh, coming out of the bearish zone so if you were still looking at this if you were still in this trade you would be out by now and uh, you know because this is moving higher and so the one minute gives you a very finer perspective whereas the five minute gives you more uh, you know, it, it gives you a longer term perspective but if you want to see on a minute by minute basis what's going on with the internals or with the RSI you would go you would drop down to the one minute so shifting between the five minute and the one minute can really give you much more insight as to whether you need to stay in the trade or uh, you know whatever the case might be but once you go one or two hours into the trading day then at that point for the most part you should be sticking with a five minute uh, chart and only drop down to the one minute when you want to get a closer finer perspective of exactly what's going on so we are still in the first hour so uh, you know sometimes dropping down to the one minute will be helpful and that's what uh, we are seeing here so you can see that there, you know, definitely a support zone was forming here so i'll go back to the five minutes but by now we should be out of this trade. Uh, you know, if, if you're still in, you should be out of this trade. Now, I'm not saying that it cannot go down further. It can. Okay, so that bar got over. Let's see how it looks from a one minute. Yeah, still some bearish. You can see. So this is not. Uh, you know, it's not. It's not able to sustain the up move. And let's just wait for the tick number here. But now you can see on the uh, on the one minute you can see the ticks going down and it's actually quite a quite a negative value negative 1400 like I said the absolute value really doesn't uh, make much of a, uh, I mean have much meaning except for you want to see where the trend is going and uh, I think in this case uh, it's still negative but we would be out of this trade because once you see this then you you know you're going to be out of this trade okay so let's go back to our five minute and Okay, folks, we are approaching the one hour. And uh, so this is how we would look at the SPX uh, market internals and uh, see how to day trade. So we'll cover different things on different webinars. Next week, we'll do something else. But uh, you know, as you can see that uh, you know, these can be pretty, uh, pretty helpful for, uh, for day trading here. So I will uh, go back here just one more time. So you can see the swing trading, the market based internals. This is what we were looking at. This algo is, is available for sale. The custom RSI is also available for sale. Uh, there are various things. I mean, as I said, there's some education. So uh, if anybody's interested, you can just uh, send me an email, info at optiontiger.com, and we'll take it from there. So uh, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for coming, and uh, I'll be sending out the recording sometime uh, later this evening. Thanks.